Welcome back troglodytes to your daily dose of guitar information. Today we're going to learn about the Epiphone Les Paul Muse series of guitars. So I think I've covered this enough times. In 2020 Epiphone mirrored the Gibson collection by doing an original and a modern series. And they also introduced this new Epiphone headstock style shape that's based off of their Kalamazoo Epiphones back in the 60s. So this particular one belongs within the modern Les Paul collection and there's four different price categories in there. Don't trust Epiphone's website, half of those prices are wrong. So it starts with the Studio and the Classic Worn at $449. If you wanna learn about the Classic Worn, I have done a separate review and demo on that one. Your next step up is at $499 with the Classic and the Les Paul Muse, which we're covering today. And then there's a huge price jump up to $649 for the Les Paul Modern. That has to be one of my favorite Epiphones that they've released this year. You can definitely check out that video. Then they also have one called the Les Paul Modern Figure that just gets a fancy veneer flame top for 50 bucks more. So let's talk the Muse series. The claim to fame for these guys is they're very lightweight and they're pretty. In my opinion, I think Epiphone is trying to capture the female demographic with these guitars because they even had Brit Lightning do the demo on their official Epiphone channel. Now that's not to say guys can't like sparkly colors too, but all of these guitars in this series have a metallic finish to them. And they offer them in a bunch of different colors that we'll talk about here in a minute. But Fender recently did a study and were surprised to find that most new guitarists, many of them actually are female. So that's why they decided to pay tribute to bands that have female front people. We're talking things like Silent Siren and the Gibson family of brands isn't shy of doing this type of series either. They did a Les Paul Goddess and a Les Paul Vixen before. And those had thin bodies, they were lightweight and they had very fancy looking finishes. So that's just my take on this series. But lightweight, what does that mean? Not only does this actually have a thinner body than a regular Les Paul. They also have this giant cutaway right here, so that also reduces weight and makes it sit up right against you. But they did something crazy. <laughs> they chambered this too. Usually if you get a thin body, they don't bother chambering it. They might weight relieve it, but this is fully chambered. I was kind of worried that this might end up neck diving on us, but when I put it on a strap, it seemed to still balance itself, at least this particular example. And it's pretty because once again, it has seven different finish options and they are all metallic. So your options are pearl white, Wonderlust Green, which is this one, Radio Blue, then you have Purple Passion, which is more of like a pinkish color, straight up jet black sparkle, you've got a scarlet red, and then Smoked Almond, that's kind of an interesting one. And then the third feature of these guys is they're very versatile. So kind of like the Les Paul Modern, this also has the coil splitting options and you can also pull the middle out of phase if you want. So it does have fancy electronics in that aspect. And they also did this lineup for the SG body styles, but we'll cover that in a different episode. So now that we understand what they're doing with the Muse series, what are my first impressions on this thing? It is such a stunning guitar. I was not expecting the finish to be quite this sparkly. I was thinking it would just have a very light metallic sheen to it, but this is in your face sparkle top. It is very striking. So I think they did a good thing on that because normally sparkle finish guitars, they're a little bit more expensive. So with these guys at $4.99, I guess we'll have to see if it's worth it or not, but the plastics complement it. I really enjoy these clear styled knobs. I wasn't sure if I was going to. However, I think I would have preferred a natural back like the moderns have, but you know, maybe you pay a premium for that. And that makes up some of the price difference, but black's okay. Black and green are my favorite colors. So this one works for me, especially the side profile view where you get to see both. But as far as negative aspects, I really don't like Epiphone frets. This one is particularly scratchy feeling, so I'm going to need to polish those guys up before they feel quite right. And this is kind of a minor thing, but these knobs are not actually tight enough. You see how they move back and forth? I think they could have done a little bit of a better job than that. They just don't seem to stick on quite very well but you can still use them for pulling up on the coil splits. They're not falling off or anything. That's just kind of something you notice when you've had the guitar for a while. So let's go ahead and throw this one on the workbench and learn a little bit more about its detailed parts and specs. Inside the Epiphone Les Paul Muse. I think what I'm gonna do for this is compare it to the Epiphone Modern because I'm curious if this is actually a better deal because I really love that guitar. So let's go ahead and point out some of the more acute differences here. Starting off, your pickups, they're actually different. These are the Alnico Classic Pro pickups, whereas the other ones had the Epiphone Pro buckers. So we'll get some slightly different tones out of these guys, despite still being able to do the coil splitting and add a phase. But it looks like this one was made in October of 2019, as was our bridge pickup. But here's something that I found really strange. Look at that. 
what is going on in this neck pickup cavity? It's like got a transitional neck tendon thing going on, but it's off center. I have never seen a neck set into the body like that. If you happen to get one of these Epiphone Muses, take out your neck pickup. See if this is an anomaly or if that's just how all the other ones are. But it looks like it says something at the base of that neck, but I can't quite make it out. But it's kind of interesting to see this finish area right here it just kind of sticks off the edge. You can't actually uh, chip it off either. That must be some pretty thick finish right there. So that's a slightly different construction method. And it looks like our QR code has been ripped off on this one, but that's pretty common on these guys. And this one does indeed still have a mahogany body with a maple cap. It's not just a veneer. Looks like for our pickup readings, the bridge pickup is 7.86. Our neck position is 7.66 and in the middle looks like 3.88. Again, you can coil split them to get about half as much. And as far as the out of phase, I'm not sure, does that change ohm reading? Eh, not really. As far as our bridge, it's the typical Epiphone Loctone ABR1 in style. It says Epiphone on the bottom. And same thing going on for the tailpiece. The toggle switch does not have a poker chip, just like the Les Paul Modern. And honestly, this actually feels pretty good. Some of these Epiphone switches can be kind of loose, but this one doesn't make quite as much noise as that last one I was unhappy with. But take a look at this finish. It's definitely a more fantastic sparkle. Like it's in your face. The Les Paul Modern is more of a mellow one that still does the whole color change depending on what lighting angle that you're looking at it. But this one just has the sparkle also built into it. So that's something else you can consider. Do you want the in your face or a little bit more subtle? And this one actually gets the clear speed knobs versus the other ones kind of have that top hat style. But those are nice because they have a ridge built into them. These guys are just, you know, regular speed knobs, except for they are clear. Another thing to consider is no pit guard on these guys. They are just bare from the factory. So I guess you could install your own if you wanted to, but that does not come inside the case or anything. As far as QC goes, the only thing I can really find is the green finish kind of rode up on the neck binding right there. So very minor and very common on these guys, but it does look a little bit sloppy when you're playing. So moving on from our chamber body with maple top, we move on to our mahogany neck and it has an Indian laurel fretboard. I've got to say this is probably my favorite example of this fretboard. It's got a lot of nice colors to it. And I mean, when you catch it in the light, you can see all that wood grain. But the thing with this one is it's so tight. On those other ones, you can like hear my nail against it. This one feels a little bit more smooth. Not that those other ones even gave me any troubles playing it, but this one, it just seems to be a really nice example. But we have 22 medium jumbo frets. It has the same 12 inch radius up and down, just like the Epiphone Moderns. Pretty much the only difference is the Moderns get an ebony fretboard, so that's completely black, but you get the same acrylic inlays, but I really like the acrylic inlays on this one. They've got a lot of uh, figuring within them. As far as neck specs, we have the Graftech new bone nut, and that measures 1.63 at the nut width. That's really tiny. Then let's look at our 12th fret. That's a little bit smaller than average, but about right, so 2.03. First fret neck depth, we're looking at 0.86, and by the 12th, 0.97. And we're rocking that 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length. Epiphone calls this the custom C neck profile shape. So you can see that first fret is definitely very rounded and thin, whereas it gets a little bit wider at the 12th fret as usual. Moving on to the face of the headstock, it's just the new Kalamazoo style, and your truss rod's right in here if you need to use it. QC wise on the neck, you can see there's some light divoting within the binding. I mean, it's not super chewed up, but even the Gibson versions have some stuff like that. So I guess it's just kind of come to be expected at this point, unfortunately. It's nothing that really super catches your eye, but it definitely is present. One of these days I need to get a macro lens so I can show you guys this a little bit better. And the truss rod cover disc reads Les Paul Muse. And as usual, they drilled the holes for the truss rod cover crooked. Moving on to the backside here, something that I find kind of interesting that the Les Paul Modern doesn't have is this tummy cut right here. So that's something that the Muse has going for it, and it is a slightly smaller body. How much smaller is it? Well, let's find out. Looks like it measures about 1.7 inches, whereas it's normally, I think, about 2. So it's just a little bit slimmer to help reduce some of the weight. But here's something that's also different. The Les Paul Modern gets CTS pots, whereas this one... It says it's made in Korea, but it looks like these guys are about the same because that one had a quick connect system and everything, just one single hand wired pot into an output jack on the side. So I don't think that's a huge deal, but it's definitely a difference. Something else that I'm noticing is the modern and Muse are routed a little bit differently. And it looks like the toggle switches are the same, but this one does not have the heel carve right here to make it easier to play in the upper frets. Now with the slightly thinner body, I mean, it naturally kind of helps, but it's not quite the same. 
but you've got your strap button at the bottom and one up here. As far as the neck goes, again, it's that C shape, whereas the Les Paul Modern has the asymmetrical shape. And with this being a black finish, you don't actually see the heel cap, you don't see the scarf joint, so maybe you actually prefer it that way. But the last difference we get to talk about is this one just has regular Grover tuners, which is a nice quality set of tuners, but the Modern has locking tuners. But here's our serial number. This one makes it out to a 2019 model in November. As far as the weight goes, this particular example is 8 pounds, 0 0.8 ounces. So let's go ahead, plug it in and hear how this one sounds. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now that we know all about the Epiphone Les Paul Muse, what are my final thoughts on this thing? It honestly sounded pretty good within the room, but once I heard the recording of it, it's like, ah, oh, this is a really bright and harsh guitar. I really did not care for the recorded tones. But I'm sure you could EQ out the amp to make it sound a little bit better, and it did have quite a few tonal opportunities. Something I was thinking when playing this though is I wish the out of phase was on this particular pot. Because when I'm playing, it's easier for me to reach here, here, and here. It's a little bit more of a movement to get to this one in the back, so I wish that they would have done it there. I'm sure it's not that hard to flop that around if you feel the same way though. But as far as QC goes, they did pretty okay. I mean, we have a few very small finish things we talked about. Kind of a strange neck tenon, but that might just be the way it's supposed to be. One other thing I saw as I was looking at this guitar, once you see it, you can't unsee it. The bridge pickup ring was installed crooked. But to answer the question, is the Epiphone Modern better than the Epiphone Muse? Is it worth paying $150 more or should you save the 150 bucks? I think it really all comes down to personal preference on this guy. Ultimately, I think I would still choose the Les Paul Modern over this one because the stock pickups in that one were just a little bit better, but with the money you save, you could have have somebody install Gibson pickups within one of these muses. So then to further decide which is right for you, you just have to take into consideration the things that we talked about on the workbench, such as all the finish options, the belly cut, or would you rather have the sculpted heel? And you can also think, do you like the black back or not? That's something that's also different between these two. And how often do you find yourself in this register playing? You might actually prefer that modern because it has that cutaway on the back. I mean, this isn't like terrible or anything. You're still going to be able to play up here, it's just going to be a little bit more comfortable right there, especially with that asymmetrical neck profile. Something else you might think about is a tummy cut important for you. For me, when I have a, this thing on a strap, the tummy cut doesn't even align to where it should be on me, so I don't really care either way if one has that or not. But if you're a guy or gal that has a tummy, you might want that. Next up, at eight pounds, this guitar is actually kind of heavy. I was expecting these to be like six and a half, seven. And if you look at some of the Sweetwater listings, it looks like you can occasionally find one that's seven, but eight pounds seems to be the average. I mean, that's not bad for a Les Paul, but this thing still feels really chunky considering they're advertising this as a really lightweight guitar. So that kind of felt like a, a misadvertisement in my opinion. And the last thing that I can really think of to talk about with these guys is the Gibson factor. Would you prefer the Les Paul Modern because it has a Gibson counterpart? It feels like you're within that family. Whereas at this point in time, the Epiphone Muse does not have a Gibson counterpart. It's just kind of something all new. Maybe they'll release a Gibson Muse. It just seems like such a missed opportunity to work with Matt Bellamy from Muse because yeah, Muse kind of already has a thing musically. Honestly, it really does just come down to personal preference. Both of those guitars are solid instruments and great to pick up if you need a Les Paul styled instrument from a brand offered by the parent company of the people who own these shapes. So let's go ahead and check this one out under black light before we say goodbye. Not too much going on here. The poly finish glows a little bit, but it's really the binding along the neck that actually does glow quite a bit. That's kind of a cool sight. This is also the reason why I try not to wear white shirts anymore because it just overpowers this segment. So everything looks good here, but I mean, it's a brand new guitar. We're not gonna find any hidden breaks, cracks, or repairs at this point in time. At least hopefully, right? If you purchase one of these brand new online, it'll ship in a box very similar to this. You can use it as a makeshift case if you want to, but I mean, it's really just good for light storage. But it is double walled. You have a little securing thing right here. It'll come wrapped in a cheesecloth to kind of prevent some of those scratches. And the design of these boxes are actually pretty good, unlike the Explorer version. So troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed learning about the Les Paul Muse today. I had a great time with this one. I honestly wasn't expecting to like it quite as much as the Les Paul Modern. And I think the Modern still has a slight edge to it for me personally, but all these really cool finishes, I mean, it really is an option for somebody out there. So if you're interested in one of these, I can help you with my new Guitar Day program, get you a very slight discount, or you can check one out at a dealer near you. All right, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.